Hello there, Leo. Welcome to your January and February 2018 Bliss Report. It's Raina here. What is a Bliss Report? Well, this is what I'm calling my abundance readings that I did periodically throughout uh, 2018, every couple of months or so. And I was really kind of like trying to balance off of my love readings by offering another focused reading. And something this time around felt like off where it seemed like I needed to broaden it, not just make it about career and money. Although if that comes up, that's awesome. But really to look at messages that may be coming through for you to inspire you to go after your dreams. I think that's the best way of putting it. So I have three decks here. Uh, the last, uh, these two I would call Oracle decks. The, this is the keeper, Keepers of the Light and this is uh, my new Akashic Tarot that doesn't, is not like this Morgan Greer deck, is not really the classic um, tarot deck, but it's called a type of tarot deck. So I'm going to be picking one of these two cards and I'm going to do a simple spread of those. Now this time around, I think I'm just going to cut the cards right here and pick the card right in front of, you know, and this one, we don't read the reverse because um, this is just, um, these are Oracle cards, so they don't, I won't, I won't talk about this yet. And, um, then this deck, well, I can just cut it on camera for you. These are very thick, which is nice when you're handling cards, but it can be hard to hold on to. Seven of Roses, which is the journey. Okay. And you do have... Um, Leo, you have that blue moon at the end of January in your sign, lunar eclipse. So that's kind of significant, I suppose you could say, for Leos. I'm going to put those down there, and let's shuffle the tarot cards and see. I'm doing just a simple spread. Let me just go like that because I'm going to need the space. Interesting. Okay. So the card that came up as the central theme for the first two months of the year is the Four of Swords. This is a card of rest and rejuvenation, Leo. And this is kind of like, I mean, I would put it in the same category as the Hermit card, for instance, where it's you're kind of withdrawing from society to some degree. And this would be more like contemplation and also physical renewal. So maybe even, you know, some of you have kind of plans to go to a retreat center, or if it is a vacation, it would be more of a, I would call it like a yoga vacation, something that is not just to indulge, but to kind of clear your head and rest your body. So something that it's not the typical vacation, even like sightseeing could be more is more active than this card represents. So we always look at why the person feels the need to do this. And, and this is the past position. The devil card is a card. The first word I that came into my mind was addiction. But addiction, people usually go for a certain 
you know, image with addiction, like, oh, you're talking about substance abuse, and it doesn't have to be that. Of course, that is one possibility, but it can be someone who is trying to break free from an obsessive relationship, or perhaps even a job situation that, you know, maybe you were a workaholic. Leos can be workaholics very easily. And you may have like burnt out and you physically couldn't do what you're doing anymore. And that's what happens. So you have that, that lunar eclipse, that blue moon, uh, very powerful full moon on January 31st. And that is, look at these cards, not as, you know, past, present, future. Maybe that is uh, where the four of swords comes in where you realize that you need to take a breather. Um, maybe you need to step back from a demanding career and, and, and clear your head because there's just been too much stress. And the thing about it is, I said that this is a bliss reading, and it doesn't necessarily mean that following your bliss is going to be being on this high-powered career track where you're looking for a certain a certain measure of success through some kind of external validation. Maybe the best way for some of you to follow your bliss is to retire. Maybe you have been pro postponing retirement because you don't know who you are outside of whatever it is that you do. And that's something that the Four of Swords, it may be forced upon you where something comes into your reality that forces you to stop what you're doing. And usually it will be a health scare. Um, when I say that, this is not meant to be uh, generating any fear. I'm not saying this because I'm seeing a vision of anybody doing this. This is just logical. How do these things happen? And by the way, if you're when you're watching this, this is something to think about if this is true for you at any age. If you feel like you're pushing yourself in a certain job, you have to ask yourself, how long can you do this before it's going to affect you physically? Not to mention emotionally. You know, when people feel stressed out, it affects them in every possible way, and it negatively impacts their life in many different ways, including their relationships. So I feel like it's important to discuss this from more than one perspective. The spiritual message is very apropos to the death card. So this is a card that is talking about irrevocable change. You being a fixed sign, you may resist change because change to you is kind of like not something that you are, that's part of your personality as a fixed sign. Fixed signs um, are a modality that includes the, the sign Scorpio that the death card represents, by the way. So there might be a Scorpio person who is part of this whole uh, process for you. But um, the other fixed signs are Leo and Taurus. And they tend to be the, the signs are very persistent, they're the builders, and this we need that kind of energy to keep people consistent. Fixed signs tend to never give up, and this can lead to obsession, which is what the devil card can re uh, represent, where they can't let go of an idea or a thing, a person. And sometimes you do have to let go of those things. And if you don't, something may come into your reality to force that, to, to be a catalyst. So you're not just um, kind of, how would I put it, just in this state of inertia where you never uh, change. Um, and by the way, when the world, when the universe is forced to make the change for you, you have a lot less control over it. So just keep that in mind if you are somebody who's afraid of making uh, changes in your life. Remember that 
either way, uh, you will probably see change in all areas of your life eventually, but it may be something that is less what you have um, wanted. So um, basically, what I want to say about this, I do um, separate love readings. And they will probably be out around the second week of January, God willing. So check back into my channel. If you're subscribed, you'll probably get a, um, they'll probably be in your feed when, when they're up. But the thing about it is that this could involve a person that you have decided you need to let go of, that it's not a healthy relationship. And um, I do, I'm not going to focus on relationships in this reading due to the fact that I already do love readings. But I just wanted to mention, <clears throat> excuse me, that that could possibly be an area where this takes place. And because I did get as the challenge position, the Knight of Swords. So this is a card of, this could be a lawyer. But if this is the other person, this could be um, an air sign, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. And your opposite sign is Aquarius, so that would be perfect for this reversed card. And um, uh, so that could be about you, like, being resistant to consulting a lawyer, so maybe getting a divorce is what you need to, to to do to not hold on to this obsessive thought. Maybe you had a dream that this relationship was going to work out, and instead of it working out, it has burned you out. And so you're taking time out, but you may need to really just finish what is happening, okay? I mean, you know, when I say finish what is what is happening, I mean take care of really um, moving on with your life, if that's what you need to do. Now, with the Knight of Swords in this challenged position, for some people, you for some Leos, which is hard to believe, but you may have a hard time speaking your truth. And you need to start doing that uh, in order to, maybe you're not being authentic with your life and you're trying to fulfill this image. And yes, Leos can be very concerned about images, so about their image. So think about that. Are you living an authentic life? Now you may be, have a profession, like let's say um, you are a lawyer and, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you, you just are not feeling it anymore. And maybe you, the only reason you did it was because your parents wanted you to be a lawyer. Yes, it's possible for people to be in their 40s doing a job because they're trying to make their parents happy. <laughs> you know? And... That's, I mean, it's very nice to make other people happy, but eventually it becomes sacrificing uh, for you, sacrificing your own happiness. And really, when we don't feel happy, it's very difficult for us to truly be a happy presence, a, a bright presence in somebody else's life. There's always going to be that ruminating, that sense of, Oh, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing and resentment even. So just keep that in mind because the, the Knight of Swords in the upright position is somebody who is very capable of, you know, getting to the point and saying what needs to be said and not beating around the bush. And, and in their life, they also tend to be very much outspoken about about things that matter to them and and not afraid what other people think I think that's another thing but you know usually Leos are are, are like that so it's kind of interesting I, I'm sure there are some some Leo people who have influences that make them more toned down 
The advice for what's coming in is represented by the Seven of Wands. Stand your ground. This is kind of a continuation of this card. Standing your ground, by the way, does not mean being obnoxious. If, if you know, th this may be a situation in a marriage where you want something that the other person doesn't want you to have. Maybe you are a stay-at-home parent and you want to work and you feel like the children are older now and your partner is dead set against it and they want you to remain in this particular role. That's, you know, that's how they feel. They may not be malicious about it. There may be some reason why they think. Maybe it's tradition. Maybe it's a sense of being afraid of the change on their end of things, that you're changing. So being gentle with someone, noticing their fear because you're changing, is still can allow you to, to stand your ground and, and to stand up for what you, your rights are. The wands are fire, okay? And fire is all about independence and creativity. You may have to fight for your creativity. Maybe you're someone who has, who's has who been in the corporate world and that's what you got burned out from and you want to be an artist. Lots of Leo people, you know, you rule the fifth house, which deals in part with creativity. So a lot of Leos are naturally creative and maybe you feel like you've paid your dues and now you want time to pursue what you want to do and you're getting pushback from someone. And... That's to be expected. Other people trigger something in them when we go after our dreams. It makes it forces them to look at if they're going after theirs. If there is so much pushback and, and a lack of support, it tells you whether or not you're around a person or people who are supportive of you. If you have a goal or dream that is not hurting anyone, that isn't going to disenfranchise anyone, and people are still critical of it or they're dismissive of it, then that's something that you have to look at and say, well, wow, I wonder if I've outgrown these relationships. The outcome, wow, I was just talking about art, and this is the artist card. The Empress card is connected to Venus the goddess of love and beauty, which is also about artistic self-expression. And this card specifically connects to Libra. So maybe you were dealing with a Libra person, but also with um, Taurus. And uh, it's about embracing the artist within you. For some of you, that's going to be the case. For others, it may be that you need to just enjoy the fruits of your labor. Maybe you need to just indulge yourself. You have been working very hard. Uh, the Four of Swords is in that central position. Maybe you need to pamper yourself, Leo, and just take, um, you know, I was going to say take a pill, a, a chill pill, but I mean, take, take some time off to smell the roses and to maybe paint the roses too. I really like the, you know, how it came together that way. And now I'm going to talk about the two uh, oracle cards. And one of them is the Seven of Roses, the journey. And uh, let's see what it says. I'm going to read it from the book. A seaport teems with activity as cargo is loaded off and onto many different ships. Two women on a small tender boat are on their way to the great ship that will take them on their journey. Two men with their trunks and cases wait to follow. This card shows a time for a journey, a move, or a relocation. You may be taking your work or creative endeavors in a whole new direction, whether figuratively to a new industry, or literally to a new city. However this journey occurs, it is sure to take you to new places and greater opportunities. Although it may require leaving something safe behind, 
This is not the time for staying safe in the harbor. It's time for finding and exploring new worlds. So go get packed. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. And um, so the, the other card I got is Isis manifesting. Your dreams, visions, and goals are becoming reality. Stay focused. Beautiful card. My Isis relates to the moon, in case you were, were not um, up on that. Isis is a strong, smart, and focused Egyptian winged or winged goddess. According to legend, she was able to move from darkness to light and between the underworld, he the underworld heaven, and earth. For that reason, whenever she comes to us, she will help us move from the hell of our own fear. That can be, you know, part of that. That uh, sometimes I think that Satan is really, you know, or demons are really just fear. Um, from the hell of our own fear into the heaven of our own love. She was also able to revive her lover Osiris from the dead. And this powerful allegorical story shows how she can help revive an aspect of our life or a dream that we may have killed off with fear or lack of self-belief. With her magical abilities, Isis will guide us to bring our dreams into reality. You're moving into a space where your dream reality is becoming your outward reality. This is, extremely import uh, this is an extremely powerful time. And it's vital to keep focused on the highest good of all. You no longer want to relive your own history and or feel unsupported. Acknowledging where you once were and how you have changed that situation around is a powerful focus of gratitude that will align you with universal abundance. Discipline and commitment are important now. Consider that you are moving between worlds when you daydream or create visions and bring life enhancing ideas into reality. Magic is manifesting all around you. That This is exciting. And I think I have found the title of my video, Man Manifesting Magic. Um, so you had a solar eclipse back in August. So very powerful new moon. You're going to have this lunar eclipse that was a total solar eclipse this is the total lunar eclipse leo you also have the north node in your sign until i believe it's november of 2018 so there's a lot of faded energy um astrologically that is assisting you or informing you and so leo understand that this is a very important period for you don't um don't feel that this is run of the mill. Even if you have felt uh, at the beginning of this year that things are off track still and you didn't have the year that you wanted to last year, it's important to always go towards the light. So in terms of what you put into your consciousness, what are you, what, what's your form of entertainment? What is your form of, what are you, the things, you know, the, the, the devil card are talking about habits. What are your habits that are dragging you down? If you feel, if you feel down, look at yourself, look in the mirror. Don't just look at the outer world and what it hasn't given you. What can you improve with your life? Can you start the day on a better foot? Can you do different things first thing in the morning to affirm the beauty of your of your life? And uh, and before you go to bed, things that you can do, rituals that I'm not talking about <laughs> magical rituals. I'm just talking about practical things that you can do to uh, raise your vibration. Okay, and this could include diets, you know, you can Google these things and find out what what kinds of diets support a higher vibration. 
what kind of people you surround yourself with, what kind of thoughts you think, and activities you engage in, entertainment, in quotes, <laughs> that you indulge in, and, you know, are these of a high vibration? Okay, well, if you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below, but I wish you all the best in the first couple of months of 2018, Leo. Take care. Enjoy your blue moon. Bye.